Look at my bald head is snaggle tooth nails. Y'all, every time I put on a fresh set of nails and it's time to take it off because they're raggedy or they most of them are lifting, my ring fingernail is the hardest to get off. Like I must have been putting on that thing real good because it, I'm aggravating it now and it's lifting a little bit. But earlier it was hard to do that thing. So I just left it alone and every now and then I'm going to go like this, kind of like, like I'm just going like this, shaking it a little bit and it's lifting a little bit. But um, I might could just... Not yet, because it kind of still hurts a little bit, but I don't know. I might slip a, like another nail tip under there to kind of like ease it out like they be doing at the nail shop. But I don't know. But y'all, you know, I just put on this fresh set on Wednesday and already I'm taking it off. Let me tell you why. I'm ordering some new nail tips from Amazon.com that will be here tomorrow. So maybe Sunday I'll work on them. I'll work on my nails on Sunday. So that way I'll have them in fresh when I go back to work for Tuesday. Like, good thing I already rebraided my hair last weekend. That only took me like almost two days, Saturday and Sunday. And I watched the whole season of Bridgerton, season two. And I'm thinking, okay, this is better than I thought. Uh, a part of me was a little upset because I'm thinking, where's that Duke? They can't just, he can't just do a cameo on where he at. And I was just so against watching Bridgerton without the Duke. But, um, what is his name, Viscount? Anthony or Anthony <laughs> even though um Benedict out of all of the Bridgerton brothers you got Colin you got um I forgot the other little smaller brother name is he's so cute the little the little boy um but of course you know we ain't you know you ain't close to my age so you need to stop um out of Colin Benedict and Anthony Benedict the artist, the painter. And ladies, turn your head. Is that the light skin look? Like if I was light skin? Like... <laughs> Let's get, wait, like, what is it? Uh, not with all this beat up eyeliner, uh, eyeliner all over the side of my face. Never mind, forget it. Anyway, you guys, um, I kind of had um, a little difficult time getting home, and I know I was on here telling you guys um, not to repay evil for evil, but I had a little incident to where I got out of character with the customer service people of a uh, bus transit. I called the operator, and I guess because. The guy couldn't hear me because not only was the wind blowing, but my phone was breaking up. So I said something real loud just so he can hear me. And I didn't think I was yelling, but I guess I was yelling. So somebody, lady in the background says, he can hear you, ma'am. He's not deaf. And I was like, uh, uh, okay, congratulations. And that's what I said. I said, oh, okay, congratulations. And, um, cause at that moment, that instant I reacted. And I gave them what they was giving me. And so the guy goes, instead of saying, okay, well, let me look that number up for you. I've called several times before and they never said, well, let me get somebody that can help you. So let me tell you what happened. He said that after I said, congratulations. And they hung up on me. I tried calling again and they said that, um, nobody is available to take your call or something like that. Some, the voice answering machine computerized thing has said that. And I'm like, so they said, if you would like to leave a voicemail or a voice message, press one. So I press one. And I'm going to admit to y'all, because I do. I'm, the Bible says, confess your sins to one another. The Bible said, confess your sins to one another. So um, I'm letting you guys know, um, and this is not to show off or anything, or I'm not a perfect person, and I'm not going to blame, well, I'm only human as a, an excuse for what I did, I didn't have to say, well, uh, congratulations. Cause I was a bit smart Alec, you know, I'm not a sarcastic person. I'm more of a smart mouth, say something under your breath, what you say, nothing type person. That's me. And well, that used to be me. I want to work on that y'all. So out of nowhere, I just reacted and I felt bad immediately. I felt convicted. So 
I left a voicemail. I pressed one and I left a voice message explaining to them what happened. And towards the end, I said, told them they need, you know, I said, I use profanity. I use bad words. I use cuss words. Um, yeah. And I'm not going to come on my channel telling y'all things that I learned at Bible study and pretend like I'm this holier than thou person. I'm going to make mistakes or I have made mistakes or even if I'm making a mistake. Past, present, and future. I'm an imperfect person. So immediately after I left that voicemail, I started apologizing to God and I said, I'm so sorry, Lord, I, I, I failed the test. I gave them exactly what they were giving me. You didn't have, they didn't have to hang up on me. So that's what the guy said when he hung up on me. I was like, uh, congratulations. And he was like, um, well, let me just see if somebody can help you. Next thing you know, the phone, bloop, that's it. There was no, well, let me transfer you to somebody else and they give you a little waiting music. No, if the phone just turned off. So I called back and they told me there were no more callers available. They didn't even say we we're assisting other customers. Instead of waiting, why don't you leave your number, you know, blah, blah, blah. Which I like that, though. But, because they do call you back. But at the same time, this one just said, no. No calls are available. Nobody's available to take your call. So, I'm like, right. Okay. So, I called again. And I left a voice message. And it was me apologizing for cursing and using profanity and saying bad words. Um, because what I said was not right. Even... From the time I said, congratulations. Because again, I didn't realize I was yelling. I'm outside trying to give this guy the bus stop information. And they're in an office. So I have to say things loud. Because not only was the wind blowing. Sometimes you, when you, when you say like you're in a house and you're talking to somebody outside. And the wind is blowing. It's like, wait, wait, I can't hardly hear you. And your phone is breaking up. So I had sent the number to the bus stop kind of loud so he can hear me. And somebody in the background, some lady was just like, he can hear you, ma'am. He's not deaf. And from that comment like that, it just made me say, oh, okay, congratulations. And the next thing you know, he's like, oh, let me see if somebody else can help you. It's almost as if he just hung up and didn't even transfer me to anybody. And... I didn't have to say congratulations. So I want to say that is kind of what I deserve. But at the same time, it's like, they didn't even give me a chance to explain. Sorry, sir. It's just that the wind was blowing. And you said my phone was breaking up so you could barely hear me. So I thought if I said the bus stop number louder, then maybe you can hear me. The uncalled for comment of me saying, okay, congratulations. And the lady saying, you know... Before that, um, he can hear you. He's not deaf. I, I didn't need to do that. I didn't even need to say what I said on the voicemail either. So I also told my family too, just my mom and two of my sisters about what happened. Um, I mainly wanted to come on here and tell you guys that as well because I'm an imperfect person. I'm not going to keep using it as an excuse though because from this moment on, I should know better. No matter how ugly somebody is being to me, no matter how nasty or rude people are being to me, it, but I'm sorry, I have to say this though, if somebody go as far as physically touching me, I know they treated Jesus worse. I know that. And I'm not going to say, well, Jesus, I'm flesh and blood. I'm down here and you up there. So, I mean, you should understand. No, but I, it's, it's when it comes to my mouth and my facial expressions, I have to watch those things because even going, that's still giving them what they're giving me or giving them what I am so capable of giving them. I don't even want to come out of a bag or just act crazy or step out of character anymore. So I thought I really felt like, I felt like it was important for me to get on here and let y'all know that I slipped up today because I think that's important. I don't want to be on here just telling y'all about God and make sure y'all not treating people the way they treat y'all. <laughs> and I have this and didn't tell y'all. I feel like, and this is not, everybody don't need to know your business and, you know, you don't need to keep telling everybody. That. No, I'm accountable. And I feel like people who are walking with God, people who are following Christ, 
they're accountable too. And we're accountable for each other. So I'm not saying tell me your deepest, darkest sins and secrets. <laughs> What the Bible said, confess your sins to one another. So what did you do? What what, what you do? Y'all had sex, huh? Oh, and are you pregnant? Oh, that's not my business. I'm just saying, I want to come on here and let y'all know that since I'm on here telling y'all what I learned at Bible study, I feel like it was mad important. Why is my neck so greasy for me to come on here to tell you guys I slipped up today? And I shouldn't have left the voicemail cursing at the operators of the bus system. Because I'm going to need them one day. I'm going to have to call again and figure out when is this bus coming. And what if, what if, lo and behold, they recognize my number. And they realize, well, she's the one who cussed us out. So I don't want to help her. <laughs> and then what am I going to do? I don't want to burn a bridge. You know? So I'm, I just have to be real careful with... How I respond. Um, I read something on somebody's fa um, Instagram story that said silence. It was a picture of a tiger. And it says silence is also a response. So I'm not saying I rather ignore people. Than uh, give them what they're giving me. No, I don't want to be rude, rude. Because some people can act a fool even if you don't react. But I would rather them act a fool if I don't react than to give them fuel by reacting to them acting a fool with me. Meaning, if I give you something to act a fool about, that'll really give you a reason. You know what I mean? But if I ignore you and you still choose to act a fool, I mean, would that still be considered my fault because I'm just ignoring you? Lord, I am just don't want to give them what they're giving me, so I'm just going to ignore them. And I believe that it is important for me to... Leave the situation to go take a walk, go take a breather, drink some water, jog, count to 10, make a friend, hug myself, high five a tree, and then come back feeling rejuvenated with a better attitude and I'll have a better response. If you choose to walk away, it doesn't make you less of a woman or a man because you want to go gather yourself. Maybe God will speak to you while you're doing that. So when it's time for you to rejoin that person, you're able to speak to them calmly because you're not upset anymore. And even if you are a little upset, you're not mad, you're not angry anymore. You don't want to punch a, a hole through somebody's face. Preferably their forehead. But that's just, you know, forget forget I even said that. But yeah. Um, and it's just it's just you have a right to do that. But if you walk away and never come back, then nothing is going to be resolved. You may think it's gonna be resolved, but it's not. So I want to make sure that not only did I ask God for forgiveness, but I said what I said. And I repeated everything, like not everything, but like I told my family, look, I had a slip up today, y'all. I was supposed to flip it on them, and I didn't. And I feel like it was necessary for me to come on here and tell y'all. And again, I'm not going to use, I'm not perfect, I'm human, as an excuse for my problems or for my reactions. Because I should know better. I'm 38, come on. I still may have my kiddish ways, but they're only going to be the kiddish ways that makes people laugh. And, you know, we're joking around and we're having fun. I need to start putting foundation on my neck and all these other kind of things. So I feel like, you know, I, I really felt like it was important for me to tell my role shenanigans. Look, I had a slip up today. I used some curse words at some bus operators on the phone. And the way my face is looking right now, like... Yeah, I did it. Almost like I don't have no remorse, but if you guys knew, I feel like crying. Because I didn't have to say anything. Even though I know it happens, I shouldn't have allowed it to get that far for it to even happen, period. I should have just said, I'm sorry you couldn't hear me. Um, I'm going to say this a little louder because the wind is blowing. There are other ways, but I think of more mature ways and the right way to handle it to after doing the bad thing. It's amazing how people can do so wrong or react a certain way. And then they think of what they should have did afterwards. That's what I did. I didn't have to leave that voicemail. I didn't even have to say, oh, well, okay, great. Um, he's not deaf. Congratulations. It's like, what, what, what good was that? <laughs> so, 
I'm not going to come on here on my YouTube channel telling y'all about what I learned at Bible study. Like, I got it all together. I'm still, you know, I still got to learn how to just stop certain things. You know, I really had a horrible human moment, but there's no excuse. Regardless of what happened, I can't treat people the way they treat me. And I did today. So, I hope everybody can, you know, understand where I'm coming from. When I say I don't want to come on here preaching to y'all about don't do this to people. They do this to you. And I turn around and I just did it. So, um, yeah. That's all I want to say, y'all. I hope you guys start to have a really, 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 really good weekend. Um, I'm going to drink the rest of my water, take a shower, and I'm probably going to go to sleep for maybe one or two hours. And then, I don't know. But um, have a great weekend, everybody. If you are celebrating Memorial Day, please be safe. Be safe, even if you're not ce celebrating Memorial Day. And um, to everybody who has served in the military, army, marines, air force, even the nurses there and seamstress people, whatever you do, whatever your job is, even to the veterans, I just want to say happy Memorial Day. And to all of our great people in the past that have served and were the greatest leaders that they can be, if you're related to anybody, anybody out there who's related to anybody who's serving, or even if it's you, thank you and happy Memorial Day. Wait a minute, hold on. Because I'm acting like, okay, Veterans Day is for the troops and stuff, right? Or I think it's Memorial Day too. Let me see. Yeah, Memorial Day meaning. Google be reading my mind sometimes. And that's scary. I barely be putting anything in. Like I put, I wanted to put, instead of um, putting perms in my hair, I wanted to try another product. And so I put texturizer. And I only put T-E-X and I put texturizer video. I'm like, how do you know I want to say, maybe I want to say Texedo or Texas. How do you even know? Yeah, Memorial Day was declared a national holiday through an act of Congress in 1971. And its roots date back to the Civil War era, according to the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. Unlike Veterans Day, Memorial Day honors all military members who have died and while serving in the U.S. forces. So for those who have served, whether you're still here or you have transitioned, Thank you. And if you are related to anyone who is still serving or have transitioned, thank you to those who are doing and who have done. Happy Memorial Day, y'all. Be safe. And like I always say at the end of my videos, y'all pray for me. I pray for y'all and we're going to pray for each other, okay? I think I might change that ending because now it's not like take care of yourself and each other from Dear Jerry Springer. But no, seriously though, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and keep it. Y'all pray for me. I'm going to pray for y'all. We're going to pray for each other. In Jesus name. I got to work on myself, y'all. All right.